Hello, it's great to be here at the Knowledge Management Institute. I'm happy to introduce Arno Borsma, who is a knowledge management professional and a pioneer in combining design thinking and knowledge management, which is what we're here to talk about today. Arno has lived all over the world, and he hails from the Netherlands, where he started his career working for uh, in marketing for a number of um, consumer products companies, but quickly he went out on his own and became an award-winning consultant and has uh, furthered his career. He's here in Washington now. One of the things he works with is the World Bank, which is very exciting. And I'm really thrilled to be able to have this conversation about the intersection of design thinking and knowledge management with you. Thank you, Janine. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here because you, um, you're one of the pioneers in, uh, in design thinking. And um, I know you've, uh, you were one of the first female executives at IDEO, a very well-known well um, uh, design thinking or design consulting firm. And um, you've started your own design firm uh, a few years ago, Motive, mm -hmm. and even won an award um, recently about right. how you looked at how design thinking companies or companies that were applying it were doing better than others. Is that right? Absolutely. We, uh, it was called the Design Value Index, and I was given an award by the Design Management Institute that sponsored this research that we did. And what we did was we we looked at design-centric firms, firms that have design sort of at the center of their strategy development, very much invested in using design to further the organization's goals. And there's not very many of them, but mm. we made a stock index of those companies that are traded on uh, on U.S. exchanges and uh, found that that index performed over 200 percent better than the S&P did in the a t in a 10-year period. Two 10-year wow. periods, in, in fact. So we, we're trying to do this every year and to prove keep proving these results and people are people are really taking notice well that's that's a great testament I mean it's always great especially in the, in the domain of knowledge management to find tangible results uh, it's, it's always a very tricky thing so if if design thinking can help do that uh, and especially in the combination with knowledge management yeah. uh, I think that will help a lot of uh, knowledge management practitioners and I guess that's one of the reasons we're here to talk about how those two domains can can intersect and help absolutely it's a great place to start Great. So, Arno, I would love to understand from you how you define knowledge management. Just tell us a little bit about that. Uh, that's a tricky question. Well, first of all, I mean, if you Google the term, you'll see there are there are thousands of definitions. So, I, I think I, I I like to keep it simple and and um, basically define it as a a process by which you organize knowledge within your organization so that you help people make decisions and um, decisions on which they can act. So it's about helping decision making, and helping uh, people to act, and um, which is which is also why I, I really like it because it's about it's about getting people to move and to fi figure out what makes them tick and um, make them uh, sometimes make them change their usual behaviors. Yeah. So design thinking has come on really strong in the last few years. You're seeing it all over the place now. It started in corporate America, and now it's branched out to the government is using it and um, Nonprofits, all kinds of different kinds of organizations are using uh, design thinking. So, can you talk a little bit about how you have linked these two things? Design thinking coming on, your understanding of that, and knowledge management as it exists, and where you'd like to see it go. Yeah, so I've been I've been doing knowledge management projects since the the late nineties, yeah. and. Um, it's it's come a long way, but it still has a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of the similar challenges. So I mean, what knowledge management and and it's again it's a, it's a it's a huge domain. It's it's a, it's obviously a term that covers a lot of things. But in the end, it's meant to solve problems, to help spread ideas, to help people collaborate, to, as I said, help executives take decisions, to make sure that new staff are up and running quickly, or that when people retire, the knowledge is retained. So. There's a long list of things that um, knowledge management is trying to help fix. But some of the issues that uh, have been there all along is the fact that it's often very uh, either technology driven because that's a very tangible part of knowledge management. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very easy to flick on a switch and see if a system works. I mean, a, a, a technology works. Uh, a database is up and running or not, it's a lot harder to figure out um, 
if you if you consider a, a knowledge worker and to see if you know if they can be more productive or what if 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 they're actually sharing everything they know and so one of the things I've always seen is that um, it's still very much driven by uh, a lot of the tangibles, whereas the actual solution mm -hmm. and the, where the actual gains will be is, is on the intangibles, it's on the, the human side. So what I really liked, and as you said, design thinking has been evolving and has been coming, I would even say, a lot more mainstream across yeah. a lot of management disciplines. And um, what I find appealing is that it's, especially if I read up on like courses of IDEO and they have certain frameworks which can be very applicable.